Uh, hi, hello. It's been uh, for a while uh, for an update. So today I wanted to give a quick update on the XDP uh, SIM proxy. So there's one user uh, sent a mail to the XDP newbies mailing list uh, with his uh, XDP SIM proxy deployment scenario. So he has a server, so he has server, a router, and a filter, and a client. So basically, he's uh, running the XDP SIM proxy on this filter box. And then when the client sends a request, the request is forwarded by the router to the server. So the server will send a response back to the client through the router. And then on this router, it will forward the forward the request or the response uh, to this filter, which runs the XDP SIM proxy. And so the XDP XDP SIM proxy will process the same uh, packet and the same act packet. Uh, uh, and the basically uh, uh, process a server response and a client request. But uh, he found a bug uh, in this email uh, with his uh, analysis, and uh, I will not go into the detail. Uh, but what I wanted to talk about here is that, uh, uh, is that one thing interesting to me is uh, he used the um, uh, forward chain. He, he added the SIM proxy. Uh, IP table SIM proxy module in the IP tables uh, a filter table and a forward chain, uh, which is different uh, than what I I know before. Uh, because because uh, uh, in, in a, if you wanted to deploy a XDP SIM proxy in a router or Linux firewall, uh, I had a, a previous video to talk about uh, this uh, this kind of deployment so in, in this uh, deployment i used the uh, firehole uh, software as a linux firewall and then used the uh, mm -hmm. the, the sim proxy uh, uh, on this firehole uh, work to work with this firehole software uh, with the XDP SIM proxy. But the problem for this is that I needed to create an IP address. I, I needed to have an IP address on the router itself. For example, here it's 10.169.72.117. So this IP address needed to exist on the router itself. Or the firewall. Then, when the firewall or the router forward the, uh, uh, when, then when the uh, scene flooding is taking, uh, uh, tag this IP address, uh, and then this IP address uh, that exists in the firewall will do a destination address translation to the, the actual back end server. Uh, so, uh, this is an uh, this. Deployment is not very uh, flexible, uh, and uh, because uh, in a firewall or router scenario, uh, we we don't really want to have an IP address uh, created for every uh, backend server. So that's not uh, what I really wanted. And then this uh, email from this user actually give me a, a better idea because um, if we put the SIM proxy module, uh, IP table SIM proxy module in the forward chain, and then uh, we don't need to create an IP on the router or firewall itself. And uh, because um, uh, the, the SIM proxy in the forward chain will simply uh, forward uh, the packet to the backend server, so no uh, destination address translation uh, required. 
Yeah, so uh, to better uh, ex explain this, I will give you a quick demo here. So, so also notice here in the BPF examples, XDP uh, proxy, I have this documentation. And the original documentation is uh, I added the uh, I added the same proxy. Uh, I added the same proxy module in the filter table input the chain. So that's the that's the problem for for router uh, firewall scenario because in input the chain uh, you needed to have a destination IP actually exist on the on the router or firewall itself, but if we change the input to the forward chain, and uh, that should uh, solve that problem. And uh, so I'm going to update this document uh, with my test. So here is my update. Uh, here, I wanted to add this documentation uh, in this uh, uh, file to say you can, like in your firewall or router, you needed to set the IP forward to one, and then the TCP sync cookie, TCP timestamp is the same, and also this setting is the same. Then in here, uh, we needed to add the IP table rules in the filter table in the forward chain with this uh, uh, sim proxy module, and uh, and also the this one also in the forward chain filter table. Yeah. So when you uh, run uh, attached XDP sim program, uh, sim proxy program, we attach to the uh, client side interface. So like this is a, a simple uh, diagram here. Uh, I have. Mm, so for example, this is a client, and then this is a firewall or router, Linux firewall router. Uh, let's just assume it has two network interface. One network interface is uh, to the client, and one network interface is to the server. And then we needed to attach the XTP sim proxy uh, program on this uh, client side interface. And then when the sim, when the client send the sim flood into to this server uh, address, uh, this firewall router, uh, this XDP program on this interface will do the uh, sim flooding uh, protection. And uh, yeah, so let's do this uh, demo quickly. So here is my uh, client. Uh, that it has uh, IP address. This is my client interface with IP address one ten three three nine. And uh, so this is uh, uh, this is the 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 Linux router firewall, and uh, I have uh, the client side uh, network interface here. ENS seven with IP address. So this this ten three three eight will be the uh, gateway of uh, the client will use this IP address as, as the client's gateway. And uh, yeah, again like the so on the client here I add a route. So if I want this client want to send the traffic to the server subnet here. And uh, use the the router uh, IP gateway IP, which is the here, right? So the same on the server. Uh, by the way, this is just for for a simple test scenario for routing. And on the server, if uh, the server want to send the traffic back to the client subnet, uh, use this router uh, server side uh, uh, interface. Okay. So that's the setup. And uh, so here on the router, let's uh, let's run the XDP program. So I, I have the uh, this setting ready here. 
put in the forward chain filter table and the client side uh, network interface and then this is the one actually attached XTP program to the um, client side network interface with other settings with the port so let's run this uh, script okay so we started the XTP sim proxy program so here is our uh, let's send our send our request from the client uh, say send a curl request we got a the server response right so and uh, there is a like one thing act I generated by the XTP sim proxy right and this is our server and so let's send uh, a flooding let's uh, send uh, HP fl uh, uh, sim flooding to attack the server IP address so I start it and then in this uh, router uh, we see a lot of uh, uh, scene and cookie generated by the XTP sim proxy and on this server uh, my server kind of froze now let me stop the sim let me stop the sim flooding okay and uh, okay this is my client okay we stopped the sim flooding okay I want to log on to my server just for the demonstration uh, okay log on to my server so my server has IP address here okay and uh, as a diagram here my server IP address 10668 so 1066 uh, uh, oh no actually my server uh, my server yeah my server is 10666 uh, yeah it's not a 10668 10668 is the router IP address on the server side okay but anyway let's uh, run TCP down on the server and you see when I run sim flooding the sim flooding should be stopped by the router okay so this uh, server let's start our same proxy XTP program again and then let's start the let's start the curl request okay so the curl request to the uh, server address uh, works okay and uh, uh, you can see the TCP down on the server side uh, this is client IP this is server IP uh, the request and the response works and now let's do a, a, a sim flooding uh, sim flooding okay let's start the uh, sim flooding Uh, same flood in the server IP address okay and uh, here uh, the same cookie program generated a lot of same cookie but since this same flooding on the server side uh, the same flooding is uh, stopped uh, there's no same flooding on the server side the server is protected yeah so 
yeah, so this is a, a quick demo to deploy the XDP SIM proxy program on a router in a router or firewall scenario. And uh, yeah, so uh, again, the, the key point is, uh, is uh, add the added the SIM proxy module in the forward chain, not in the input chain. I mean, you can put in the input chain then, but then you need to create a, a IP uh, for, uh, for the backend server. And then you, uh, it requires a destination address translation. So, but this way is, I think it's better. And uh, thanks for the user uh, who reported this. Uh, he reported his problem, but from his problem description, I get uh, the idea to put the IP table rules in the forward chain. Yeah. Okay. Thank you.